Now, you'll find that last week, as we celebrate Easter, we remember the events that surrounds the Passion of Christ. We saw how on the first Good Friday, Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross. He was buried, but then on the third day, He rose from the dead. Now, immediately after His resurrection, you find that there was a very remarkable story that happened in Luke chapter 24, and it is called The Road to Emmaus. And this morning, we want to look at this story. So let's begin by looking at Luke 24 and verse 1. Luke 24 and verse 1. Now it says here, Now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they and certain other women, a woman with them, came to the tomb, bringing the spices which they had prepared. Now, this was the Resurrection Sunday, the day when Jesus resurrected. Now, the disciples and certain women came to the tomb, wanting to anoint the body of Jesus. Now, notice, Luke call it the first day of the week. Shall we all say together the first day of the week? Now, the phrase here literally means day one of the week. It reminds us of day one of creation in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter one, remember, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And in verse 3, it says, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And then God called the light day, and the darkness He called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day, day one. So here, like in the creation story in Genesis, Luke 24 is about a new beginning, the beginning of a new creation, the beginning of new things. And you find a church, no matter what situation we are going through in life, it may look very dark, without form, void, darkness may surround us, but you know what? Today, God's Spirit is moving. Today, God is still speaking, let there be light. Today is day one. Today is a day of new beginning. Now, the story went on in verse 2. If you go back to Luke 24, it says, But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened, as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men, stood by them in shining garments. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the earth, they said to them, Why do you seek the living among the day? So notice the disciples came to the tomb expecting to find the body of Jesus lying in the tomb. But to their surprise, Jesus' body was missing. He was gone. Now, if the body of the Lord, the living one, is not to be found in the tomb amongst the dead, then the question is, where can I find Jesus? Where can I find Jesus? Now, the answer to this question is found in the story of Emmaus. And this morning, we want to find the answer to this question. Where can I find Jesus? In verse 17, Luke 24, the story goes, it says, And he said to them, What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another as you walk and are sad? Then one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And have you not heard not known the things which happened there in these days? And Jesus said to them, What things? So they said to him, The things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, 
who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God. And all the people and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. And yes, certain women, women of our company arrive, who arrived at the tomb early, astonish us when they did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it was as the woman had said. But him, they did not see. Then in verse 25, Jesus said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now notice this conversation. The two disciples were able to describe all the events, the facts to Jesus, concerning Jesus in detail. In other words, they were not, they were not lacking hate knowledge. But they still cannot recognize Jesus who was standing right in front of them. Why were their eyes blurred? What was the problem? You see, they, the problem is this. They could not accept that Jesus had to suffer. You see, Jesus asked them, in verse 26, ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into, into His glory? You see, they cannot accept that, that Jesus has to go through all this terrible suffering. They can accept that He is a prophet, mighty in deed and word. They can accept that Jesus is the miracle worker, the one who healed the sick and cast out demons. But in your mind, they say, but this great prophet, this Messiah, how can he die? Three and a half years, these guys followed Jesus, hoping, they say we were hoping that he was the one, the Messiah, who was going to redeem Israel. We were hoping that he was the one who will liberate Israel from the Roman captivity and make the nation of Israel prosperous and powerful once again. So in your journey with Jesus, they thought following Jesus would eventually bring them to a place of comfort, to a position of power and influence, to a place of financial stability. But alas, ado, whatever you want to say, but alas, I use Bible word, alas, the journey was filled with persecutions, Trials, tribulation, troubles, betrayal, crucifixion, and eventual death. In their heart, they were saying, this is not the Jesus I was looking for. This was not the journey I have signed up for. As a result, their eyes were restrained. Their eyes were blurred. They cannot accept the suffering Christ, the one who was standing in front of them, when they look at Jesus, they say, how can this perfect one have holes in his hand, have holes in his side? He was supposed to be the one. As a result of their wrong expectation, their eyes were blurred. But friends, didn't Jesus say it in John 16, 33, that in the world you will have tribulation? Turn to someone, tell the person, in the world you will have tribulation. You see, the truth is this, is this. Death must come before resurrection. I say it one more time. The truth is, death must come before resurrection. How many of you want to experience resurrection life? Can you wave both hands? Resurrection life. Woo! 
Well, what are you asking for? You are asking for death before resurrection. Because if you are alive, you do not need resurrection, you are alive. You only need resurrection when you are dead. Death must come before resurrection. That is why I always say that in Christ, failure or death is not final. Failure or death is not fatal. Because if you can persevere through Friday, where Jesus was crucified, buried. On Saturday, it looked terrible, it looked gloom. But on Sunday morning, Jesus Christ resurrected from the dead. Friday, this past Friday, was one was very tough and very painful for all of us as a church. Because we had to bid farewell and we have to miss our pastor, our brothers, our sisters for a season. That same night, I had a combined cell group meeting. I arranged, we booked a function room in a condominium, wanting to welcome the new friends. But it was not easy, very tough. I went to the meeting with a heavy heart. Like the disciples on the road, to Emmaus. But when we assembled, we played games together. I was thinking, the, the game master, fantastic, came up with a game that can get everybody involved. But I thought to myself, this game is better suited for those who are in their 15, 15 years old, 16 years old. <laughs> but my age group are, are those that are like me, you know, older folks. I was thinking, how is this going to work? But somehow, we play games together. We fellowship over food. We pray together. We have testimonies. We heard about how one of the members, the dad was, a few weeks ago, was dying in the hospital in the ICU. The doctor told the member, told the family, let's pull the plug. There's no more hope. But then they begin to pray. He, he called me and said, Pastor, won't you pray? I said, I, I will pray, but I couldn't come down because I got to travel. I was going away to Bandung. And then he said, don't worry, Pastor, all you need to, to do is to speak the word. I say, but I'm not Jesus. <laughs> but nonetheless, I spoke the word. I spoke the word. You know what? Weeks has passed. They didn't pull the plug, but the dead is recovering. Now out of ICU in the normal world. So we assembled, we share testimonies, we eat together, we fellowship. And right in the midst of it, suddenly, as we were gathering together and having conversation, I felt the presence of Jesus walking into the function room. And I realized that when two or three are gathered together, I am in the midst of them. Friends, the best way for you if you are facing certain death in your life, failure, discouragement, depression, the best, one, the best thing for you to do is to gather with the assembly of His people. If you can find the assembly of His people, that is why Sunday morning, this is so crucial. We are not doing this for ourselves. We come together because when we come, Jesus comes. Hallelujah. So, that night, we sang a song. We sang a very old song. But as we sing, I felt Jesus coming in the midst of us. The song goes like this. We are a family that loves, 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 loves one another. We are a family that cares, cares, cares. For sisters and brothers Through sunshine or rain We will love just the same We are a family that loves, loves, loves 
loves one another. Amen. Why do you turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor, we are family. You know what? That night, by 10 p.m., the booking, you know, in all condominium function room, at 10 p.m., the time runs out. The security guard came to chase all of us home. But the amazing thing is, nobody moves. <laughs> that night, all of us hang out, talk, fellowship. We didn't want to go. Why? Because Jesus... Jesus was in our midst. I also don't want to go. But then I got to prepare a sermon. <laughs> so, somebody asked me, somebody asked me, he said, Pastor, you are supposed to prepare a sermon for the weekend. You are preaching on Saturday, yesterday, and today. And you're here. Now it's already past 10 o'clock and you're still here. Go back, we clear the place. I said, in my heart, I was, tell, I was, in my heart, I was saying, you did not know what you did for me. You didn't know what you did for me tonight because by you coming together, Jesus came and He revived my heart and set my heart on fire. Where can I find Jesus? Let's close the story in verse 32. It says, And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while He talked with us on the road and while He opened the Scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how He was known to them in the breaking of bread. Friends, notice, in the presence of Jesus, their heart burns, set on fire, and they return to Jerusalem, the house of God, the presence of the living God.